So today I wanted to talk about something that most people find valuable, but not a lot of them will actually know the incredible place that it comes from. That is gold. Well, it's not real gold, of course, because I don't have any of that stuff. This is simply just aluminium foil with a colouring layer added to it. And it's just the same stuff that you'll find covering the chocolate bars that you eat. But it does resemble something that we call gold leaf. A gold leaf is simply gold that's been hammered into thin sheets and it has a range of uses like in food and in architecture and in art. And it's been used in these ways since ancient times, which gives you an idea of how connected to our culture gold has become. But if people knew the incredible way that gold was born and how it found its way to planet Earth, I think that they'd be even more fascinated by the metal than they already are. Gold has fascinated us humans for a really long time, with the earliest evidence of our interactions with it dating back to over 40,000 years ago, where gold flakes have been found in Paleolithic caves. Our lust for gold has sparked wars, it's divided populations, and it's founded empires, and we've been actively mining the stuff for over 7,000 years, with the total world production of gold since the start of civilization reaching as high as around 155,000 tons. Now even though this might sound like a lot, all of the gold that's known to have been mined in human history would only be enough to fill up three and a half Olympic sized swimming pools. Now something that I think makes gold quite special is the fact that it bridges the gap between old and new, with ancient cultures using it for things like jewellery and decorating tombs, whilst in modern times it can be found treating cancer and coating astronaut visors and even on computer chips. And there's a few reasons why gold has become so valued and so varied in its uses. For instance, gold is highly malleable and ductile, with a single gram of the stuff being able to be beaten into a sheet measuring one square metre, and so thin that it can become semi-transparent. It's also one of the least reactive chemical elements, resistant to most acids and resistant to corrosion. And on top of all of this, it's also a good conductor of electricity. So all of these attributes make it great in a variety of situations and a great storage of value. But to know where this incredible material comes from, we've got to look to the stars. So gold is an element. You remember the periodic table that, at least for some of you, probably gave you nightmares at some point in your life. Well, here's gold. With a symbol of AU, it's an element on the table, just like carbon and oxygen, or iron and copper, just to name a few. But gold is what is known as a heavy metal element. And elements with this name have higher masses due to the fact that they're made up of higher numbers of subatomic particles. Now lighter elements, like the oxygen that we breathe, are made by nuclear fusion within stars, which is essentially just the smashing together of atoms. But heavier elements like gold can't be made in this way. For that, we'll need something even more violent. The collision of two neutron stars. Now neutron stars are the remains of giant stars that are bigger than our sun, whose cores have collapsed at the end of their lives. They're made up primarily of a subatomic particle called neutrons, and they're packed to a density of an atomic nuclei. And they're so dense, in fact, that a single teaspoon would weigh as much as a mountain. And something else that I find fascinating about them is that newly born neutron stars can spin as fast as several hundred times every single second. And now by this point you might be thinking, well this is all well and good, but what has any of this got to do with gold? Well, if two of these neutron stars are close enough together, their gravitational forces acting upon each other could cause a neutron star collision. And this is where our prized element is made. The collision of these neutron stars results in a violent explosion that we call a kilonova, which is the equivalent of a thousand supernovas. And it creates a giant mushroom cloud of glowing material that spreads out away from the site of the collision. And in the moments after the collision, neutrons and other subatomic particles start mixing and bunching together. And it's in these moments that gold is formed. And incredibly, just one single collision just like this can produce hundreds of Earth masses of gold all at once. So the cloud of material created by the collision continues out into the galaxy, sending cosmic shrapnel to nearby stars and star systems at a few tenths of the speed of light. Now how it goes from this stage to being found on Earth is still up for debate, 
But it's possible that whilst our planet was forming, gold from one of these collisions found its way into our young star system and became encased in molten rock whilst our Earth was forming. And once the planet's core formed and the upper layers solidified, it's possible that large collisions of metallic and rocky objects with our planet provided the outer layers with the precious metal. So, the gold that we crave so much might be even more special than you may have thought. It's travelled distances across the galaxy that we couldn't even comprehend, to reach that little patch of ground that might be beneath your feet, or to become that piece of jewellery that you're wearing right now. Thanks for watching this episode of Aspect Science. As always, I really hope you enjoyed it. We've got a lot more mini docs just like this one coming soon. So if there's any topics you want us to cover, leave a comment down below letting me know and we'll definitely consider it for a future episode. And let me know your thoughts about this episode down in the comments below as well. So until the next one, I'm Tom, you keep discovering the world around you and I'll see you next time. I'd highly recommend some of this fake gold stuff or at least the things that's inside it. Cool. Let's take 12. So should we do another like five takes of that? Yeah? Okay, cool. So I'd really highly recommend picking up one of these fake gold